Hello and welcome back to NHB Retro. Um, today I'm taking another look at this uh, really very, very cool PC Junior that I picked up not that long ago. Um, this is pretty much the way it came to me, um, other than a little bit of drive servicing that I posted in a previous video. In this video, um, I want to take this base machine, which is a 128K machine, um, and upgrade its RAM. Now it already has this uh, expansion here, um, which is a Tecmar Junior Captain. Now this has another 128K of RAM in it. Let me pop this off here so we can uh, take a look. I've already removed the screws that hold this in usually. Okay, so there's the Tecmar by itself. Unfortunately, this cover has a little bit of a broken piece, but yeah, so this um, this this piece of hardware has a parallel interface in it. It takes a power supply, which is interesting. Uh, my, my understanding is that the, uh, the PC Junior stock power supply is just not powerful enough to reliably um, power a peripheral like this, so it had to have external power. Um, so that's interesting. Now, this particular card, um, according to the manual, it looks like you could buy this card with either 128K installed, like this one has. Um, and I'll go ahead and pop this open here so we can see it. Um, or with 64K in installed, and then a user upgradable path. Um, actually, I think the manual even mentions that you could buy it with 0K, which I guess would be uh, purchasing it just for the um, parallel interface. Okay, so this just lifts out. But it also says you can um, uh, you can populate it with different RAM chips to get more memory. So this one currently has um, two banks of 64K each, giving us 128K of RAM. It's got some jumpers and um, uh, dip switches to configure what type of RAM you have in there. It it's a, apparently supports either these 64K bit, 64K by one bit chips or uh, 256K by one bit chips uh, in, in one of the bank, in the banks. They have to be homogenous. They have to be the same type of chip. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, you should be able to switch this out and upgrade the whole thing to be a 512K expansion. Um, I've ordered some chips. Uh, my plan is to desolder all of these RAM chips uh, and socket them and then um, put in at least one bank of 256K and see uh, what happens. So yeah, that's the plan. Um, let's get to the desoldering. I'll go over some of the configuration stuff uh, once we have it uh, put back together. Okay, I've got the desoldering station warmed up. Um, let's just try one of these and see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and try desoldering without adding fresh solder first. I find that that's not always necessary. So let's just see how this goes. Okay, that looks really nice. Let's just do the rest of these. Okay, the first one went really, really well, and the, after that they are proving to not desolder so well. Let me try one of these other pins here. Yeah. Those are not coming out. 
another. Okay, so I'm going to reset, get my soldering uh, gun out here, and try adding some solder. Okay, got the soldering iron warmed up, and let's try adding some fresh solder here. Of course, I did not start my fan for some unknown reason. Let me do that now. Okay, let's see if that gives us some better results here. This board is a little bit less than ideal in setup because it has this, what I think is probably a heat spreader on the other side that makes it a little bit difficult to deal with. Um, let's just try... Okay, that looks good. Okay, these all look like they're coming out really nicely. Let's check and make sure that the pins are loose. I think I re-soldered the first one. Okay, let me uh, see about getting this first one unsoldered here. I'm going to keep working on this and I will uh, bring you back when I have uh, the first chip out. And here finally is the, is the Tecmar Junior Captain uh, with all the RAM chips uh, removed. Um, it went fairly well. This is, this is by far the most desoldering I've done at one time um, on a single project. Um, and the chips were kind of difficult to get out. For the most part, that came out okay. Um, there is one um, trace that got lifted. Uh, that should be an easy fix. I'm just going to put a bodge wire on the uh, backside between the, the two pins that are now separated. But yeah, overall, that went pretty well. Um, my plan next is to get the sockets installed and then uh, to reinstall the 64K banks they were in there previously just to make sure everything is working. Um, I, I do have, like I said, some 256K ships uh, on the way. They're not here yet, um, and, and we'll, but we'll see uh, how the 64K um, banks work when we get it all put back together. So yeah, up next is the sockets. Uh, I'll bring you back when I have those installed, and then maybe we can do a little test. So here is that uh, repair for the uh, damage that I caused when I was taking the RAM chips out. I've gotten two uh, of the 16 sockets in place here. Um, and on the bottom, 
I just, yeah, just had to solder a little bodge wire. Um, I'm sure it's one of the address lines, and that was the part that I uh, broke. Lost continuity. Now there's continuity there. Um, yeah, should be good to go. On to the next step, which is putting the rest of the sockets in. And after a little bit of work, here are um, here's the board with uh, sockets in, in place and all the chips back in their sockets. Um, and haven't changed any of the dip switches or anything, so this should be back to our 128K configuration. Um, and uh, next I'm just going to go and plug it in and, and see if it works. I've got the... Uh... Junior Captain temporarily just plugged into the side of the PC Junior. I've got its um, power supply attached to it, its separate power supply. Let's go ahead and cycle the power. And there you can see it's counting past the uh, 128K that it uh, has stock and is booting into basic uh, with 256K. So that is back the way it was before we pulled the chips out and uh, socketed them. So that's a good sign. Um, now let's see about switching in some of the 256K chips. All right, I've uh, swapped out the two banks of 64K for one bank of 256K now and adjusted the uh, settings appropriately. I don't have enough chips to populate the whole thing yet, um, but let's see what we get here. This should give us, I think, 384 uh, total free RAM. So let's go ahead once again and boot the system. All right, right past 256, and there we go, 3D4K. So, yeah, very successful uh, upgrade for the junior captain. I do have another um, set of chips on the way, and I will be expanding it out to the full 512K. Uh, but, yeah, for now, that's um, all I have. Hopefully you enjoyed watching. Um, let me know if you have any uh, questions or comments. Uh, actually, if anyone out there knows how to upgrade the, uh, or replace rather, the battery on one of these, uh, please drop me a line. It, it's an interesting looking battery configuration that I'm not familiar with. But uh, yeah, for now, that's it. Uh, hopefully I will have some more videos up uh, sooner rather than later. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed watching.